Hi, everybody. Um, first, I would just want to thank you for being here and welcoming us, and also the whole team that we've worked with at work camp because you guys have been made things so easy and smooth so thank you for that so as you heard i'm sally lehrman i lead the trust project i founded it and the trust project is an international collaboration of news organizations working to develop a more trusted and trustworthy press and today we're going to announce our new wordpress plugin which was developed by Kay's team great thank you so I'm Kay Lima. Um, I'm actually now the acting director of INN Labs, which is the product and technology team at the Institute for Nonprofit News. And you'll be hearing more about the plugin in just a bit. Sharing the mic. So, new, journalism is in crisis. You know that trust has been declining since basically the dawn of the internet. And um, we have deliberate efforts to undermine trust in the news. And on the internet or on any digital space, when you look at the information, everything looks the same. So if you're looking at a news story by a you know, qualified quality journalist, it looks just the same as a poorly reported story. It looks the same as maybe a piece of advertising, a piece of propaganda, or maybe even um, information designed to incite an anger. So I thought, well, can we flip the picture? Can we use this amazing space to support quality, to support quality news and trustworthy news? So that's the idea behind the Trust Project. And what we case showing you here, if you imagine the public adrift on the sea of information, and then you imagine, thank you, the platforms kind of trying to steer people around on these massive cruise ships to the right place, can the, and they're not doing the greatest job. None of us are doing a great job. So can news organizations be sort of a lighthouse um, and to provide trust indicators on their sites to show this is what, who and what is behind the news and then also offer information to platforms so they can surface more quality news. So what I did was go ahead and start with the user because if you're going to change the algorithms, you have to give people you have to give the algorithm information about um, basically what should go into the formula so start with the user and ask them what is it you value in news when do you trust it when don't you and then took that information to news publishers and we worked with 75 different news organizations to try to marry what we learned from users with journalistic values to come up with these trust indicators that you now see on um, about 140 sites, which represent, um, it's from about 14 different brands or publishers. And we're about ready to launch with and get up to probably about 200 sites from 18 publishers. So I want to share with you what we found out from the users and then go kind of tell you a little, show you some trust indicators, and then Kay will talk about the plugin. What we found, we found that there are basically four user types, and I'm not going to go into the user types except to tell you one thing, that all the way from the angry and disengaged to the avid hyper user, there is a sense that news is important, that people want to be informed. So that's the good news. Lots of folks, though, feel like they're not getting what they want. So one of the first things we heard is people understand that journalists try to be impartial, but they say everyone has an agenda. So what's yours, newsroom? They talk about wanting to feel um, or to hear from diverse voices. People like themselves, unlike themselves, and especially not just from people at high levels of business and government. They wanted to feel a relationship with journalists. So who is this person? What's their expertise? What's their agenda? They wanted to know, what am I looking at? Is it news? Is it analysis? Is it opinion? Is it advertising content? There was a sense that there was all this blending together, so they wanted to be more informed about that. How do you know what you know? So news organizations, tell me how this story was built. What are your sources? Then there were a couple of last ones, locally sourced. Is it, does this journalist know about my community, about me, whether demographically or geographically? And also, um, was it, were they there? and let me participate, a high expectation of participation. So what we did was take all that information, I said, marry it with journalistic values. So here you see on the page, uh, La Repubblica, is one of our partners, is showing their agenda, which as you know, as journalists, is to serve the public. So what's their ethics code? What are their correct, when do they do corrections? What's their fact-checking strategy? Who owns them? What is their, um, 
uh, covers priorities. And then you can see it on the site page and an article page. Next one is author information. So structured information about the author, who they are, what languages they speak, where they're based, on both an author page and an article page. And then the third example I'll show is just what is this? This is an example, Washington Post is showing analysis. This story's analysis is kind of way up there at the top. And then they have a shared definition that all of our, like a working group of trust publishers decided upon. So not only are we showing labels, but these labels all are in agreement. So those are just a few of the trust indicators. What's in it for the platforms? Well, as I mentioned, they're getting now um, consistent markup language that matches up with these trust indicators from our publishers. Google being Facebook and Twitter all have agreed to use the markup in, and they're thinking both about design and in their, Google is using them in their algorithms. You can see an example from Bing showing the type of work on the uh, search results page. And then Facebook, that's an um, experiment that they're doing uh, in the, on the UX side. So one last slide I think I have. Oh, so what's in it for the newsrooms? Well, uh, UT Austin did an, a study of the trust indicators. They had 1,200 people looking at, half of them randomly saw the trust indicators, half did not. And they found that those sites that did have the trust indicators, um, people responded to them thinking that the site was more trustworthy, was reputable, was reliable, told the whole story. There were results for the reporter that the reporter was felt to be have more carefully researched the article, was well qualified, and there were behavioral intentions such as being more willing to pay for more news from that site. And those are all statistically significant results. Trinity Mirror did a similar study with the site Gone Live, and they found, you know, just in summary, that you've got the data here, but 10% increase overall in trust in the site. So. Um, and then, then finally, there's just some um, kind of good things that you get from doing this project, which is uh, a European broadcast. So the Trust Project has helped push some tidy up bits we needed to do anyway. And a regional site said, uh, we, needed to, we haven't looked at our ethics code in 20 year, years, and so we think it was about time for an update. So with that, I think I will hand it over to Kay here, who tell you more about the plugin. Great, so the Einan Labs team uh, collaborated with Sally and the Trust Project to create a plugin that would then easily store and display the trust indicators that her team had identified. Um, and so what this does is um, allows the sites to convey the trustworthiness of their site, um, as well as at a deeper level for the authors and articles themselves. We did this by uh, creating backend settings uh, for posts, authors, and newsroom information, and best practices policies, um, which then are displayed on the front end um, and are also that machine readable data. Um, there's also a short codes component for the plugin as well, which makes implementing the front end of the indicators um, more flexible depending on what your theme may be like. So this is an example of the back end of the plugin, um, just uh, typical settings here, but are again specific to the indicators. And so what you're seeing here are settings for corrections, sourcing and, and methodology statements, et cetera. Um, and then it can be pulled into the front end um, either through, again, the short codes or in a sidebar, say with widgets. And this has all been uh, standardized across all of the WordPress sites. Um, through this process of creating the plugin, we've been able to collaborate with um, right now a group of five beta testers. Um, and through a weekly collaboration with them, we've been able to get um, feedback for future plugin improvements. And they've also been able to benefit from working together on editorial um, developments as well as the, the technical implementation of the indicators. Um, and so coming up next, we did want to let everyone know that there will be a phase three of the implementations. And so we'll be working on a WordPress only phase um, and hopefully getting at least 20 more WordPress sites to be involved um, in this testing phase. And if you'd like to be um, considered for that process, you can reach out either to myself or to Sally for that. So yeah, we really would love you to join us. And so this is just an example. These are our first um, 14 companies that 
launched in November, so you can see these trust indicators on their sites. The next slide will show another 18 that are now implementing. So we have a standard that is now a developing global standard that we invite you to participate in. It's got user um, interface that is, I mean, not user interface, but structured user um, information that is all shared. There's schema.org vocabulary that's shared. And so I only showed you, we only showed you a few examples. And if you want to move to the next slide, oh, here's how you can sign up if you don't get an opportunity to talk to one of us. Go, this is our website, thetrustproject.org. And if you click on that collaborator, um, button, you will get to a page just describing how to participate, including a form that you can sign in on. So with that, I think we'll stop. I had one more slide, but um, in case, do we have time for questions or not? Um, no. no? Okay. Sorry, unfortunately, we're, our we're running right. so um, short that I think it makes probably the most sense if, if there are questions to, to find the speakers this evening or tomorrow. Um, we want to make sure everyone can get in their time. But thank you so much for your presentation.